apartheid in South Africa crumbled after Nelson Mandela walked to freedom, but black people suffered decades of government-backed injustice before it did. Apartheid really began in 1948. South Africa, led by the apartheid government during the 1960s and 1990s, which was in a long fight with its neighboring countries, mainly trying to stop Namibia from becoming independent. To ensure justice for all the inhabitants of the Republic of Namibia. When things got more intense, other countries put restrictions on South Africa, so they couldn't get new airplanes for their air force. This left them with old fighter planes that weren't good enough to compete with the better Soviet MiG-23 used by their African opponents. The MiG-23 was the first Soviet jet with variable sweep swing wings to enable high-speed flight as well as manageable takeoff and landing speeds. You are watching Battleground. Consider subscribing to watch regular episodes. South Africa had to decide what to do to keep fighting. They had two choices. Make a completely new fighter, or update their current French Mirage the Threes. They picked the second option. The world was surprised as South Africa changed the old Mirage the Threes into the Atlas Cheetah. Agile Cheetah, this versatile aircraft ranks among Arm Corps' most ambitious and technologically complex success stories. This aircraft, an upgrading of the Mirage Three a high-tech fighter that could fly very fast, move quickly, and attack air or ground targets in Africa. The South African Border War, also called the Namibian War of Independence, happened from August 1966 to March 1990. It took place in Namibia, Southwest Africa, Angola, and Zambia. The main groups involved were the South African Defense Force and the People's Liberation Army of Namibia. Portugal, Cuba, and the Soviet Union were also important in this war. When Namibia couldn't get independence from South Africa through the United Nations, Namibian political groups decided to go to war. They got support from the Soviet Union, China, and Cuba, and other African countries joined in. As the fighting got worse, South Africa's military got more aggressive. This led to other countries putting sanctions on South Africa, making it hard for them to take care of and fix their airplanes. Things got even worse with the United Nations, putting an arms embargo, a ban on weapons, through Resolution 418. This stopped South Africa from getting new airplanes from most countries. These rules were put in place because of South Africa's apartheid system. The South African Air Force, SAAF, mostly had old British and French planes and started having trouble fighting against better Angolan MiG-23 planes from the Soviet Union. The SAAF used a few French Dassault Mirage 3s and Mirage F1s as its main fighter planes. With fewer options available, South Africa had only two choices, make a completely new fighter plane or update the ones they already had to handle new challenges. They chose the second option, but there were issues with the Mirage F1s, which were delivered between 1971 and 1975 before the international ban. Out of the 100 they ordered, only 48 arrived, messing up the SAAF's plan to replace the old Mirage 3s. The Mirage 3, delivered in the early 1960s, was already too old for the ongoing conflict in South Africa. It didn't have the right moves, speed, or electronic systems to compete with the more advanced MiG-23 in aerial battles. By the 1980s, the South African aviation industry got better at making planes. This progress let the military upgrade its Mirage fighter planes a lot. Working with the Atlas Aircraft Corporation and the Israel Aerospace Industries IAI, they created the first Cheetah fighter plane. This change was a big modification of an old fighter into a powerful new one that could compete with the MiG-23 and even the American F-16. Atlas and IAI used existing Mirage 3 upgrades in the market, like Israel's Nesher and Kafir fighters, and the Mirage 5. These planes started as Mirage 3 but became more powerful with new technology, parts, and weapons. The South African Air Force, SAAF, upgraded them by changing about half of the Mirage 3 parts. They added things like dog tooth extensions on the front edge to make the planes stall less and perform better. They also put canards on the front of the main wing to help with low speed maneuvers. The nose got changes to fit a dual purpose Israeli radar and later, a modern pulse Doppler radar. Other changes included adding a bolt on flight refueling probe on the right air intake and weapon pylons under the engine air intakes. The cockpit got a makeover with new ejection seats and a better set of avionics. The engine, a Snecma Atar 9K50, was built under license and gave the Cheetah over 16,000 pounds of thrust with an afterburner. This allowed the Cheetah to go over 1,160 miles per hour, climb at a rate of 46,000 feet per second, and cover about 808 miles. The weapons on the Cheetah could change depending on the version and what it was doing. 
But all Cheetah planes had two 30mm DIFA cannons and a darter. They also had other weapons like air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-surface missiles, laser and GPS-guided missiles, and regular bombs. The Cheetah, named after the fast African mammal and with its camouflage, was about 50 feet long, 27 feet wide, 14.8 feet tall, and could take off weighing up to around 30,000 pounds. There are four different versions of the Cheetah, C, D, E, and R models, each made for a specific job with unique features. The initial version, Cheetah C, was a single-seat model, and they produced more than 38 of them. After that came the Cheetah D, a two-seat trainer that could also carry guided bombs, but only 10 out of the 16 made received a specific type of engine, so the others were retired before the Cheetah E was introduced. The Cheetah E was an advanced version designed to be a versatile fighter capable of operating in various weather conditions and intercepting other planes. They made 70 Cheetah E's, but they stopped using them in 1992 when they introduced the modernized Cheetah C. This version had high-tech features, including an excellent radar and electronic warfare tools. It also had a data link for updates to the helmet-mounted sight, heads-up display, and improved controls. The Cheetah C had a red assigned nose to accommodate updated electronics and radar systems. It could also carry different precision-guided bombs, such as laser-guided, TV-guided, and GPS-guided weapons, as well as air-to-ground and air-to-air -air missiles. Despite the impressive upgrades of the C model, there was still room for improvement. The military wanted to make it even better, leading to a new study. The result was the Cheetah R, a reconnaissance version that differed from others by lacking an in-flight refueling probe and twin DIFA 30mm cannons. The Mirage 3 R2Z, specifically number 855, was chosen for this upgrade program. Despite progress in the program, the South African Air Force ended the project and repurposed the prototype as a testbed for the Atlas Advanced Combat Wing. In the operational timeline, the initial Cheetah Ds were put into service with the 89th Combat Flying Skull at Air Force Base Petersburg in early 1986. Their public debut in July 1986 coincided with a decrease in South Africa's foreign interventions in the ongoing border war. The fighter aircraft officially became operational in 1987, followed by the introduction of the Cheetah S, which joined the 5th Squadron stationed at Louis Tricard Air Force Base. As more cheetahs were delivered to the South African Air Force, pilots began using them in contested areas. Some pilots found in-flight refueling more challenging compared to the proven Mirage F1s. Nevertheless, the SAF was content with the improved performance of the updated cheetahs. Despite the eagerness of South African aviators to engage in combat and achieve ace status by defeating Soviet aircraft, this opportunity never arose. The exceptional cheetahs arrived too late to participate in offensive operations during the concluding stages of the Namibian War. Although hostilities resumed in 1985 after the brief Lusaka Accords, guerrilla activity intensified but ceased abruptly with the signing of the Tripartite Accord involving the Republic of Angola, the Republic of South Africa, and the Republic of Cuba. With the mediation of the United States and the United Nations, Namibia gained independence marking the conclusion of foreign troop involvement in the region. Following the December 1988 Accords, most Cheetah D and E variants were grounded. Although more than 16 of each model remained operational, production came to a stop. Focusing resources on developing and producing the Cheetah C model, it was introduced in January 1993. The initial fighters were stationed with the 2nd Squadron at Air Force Base, Louis Trichard and remained operational during the negotiations that marked the conclusion of the apartheid system between 1990 and 1993. However, as the 20th century turned, all cheetahs became outdated, prompting the South African Air Force to retire them and replace them with Swedish Saab JAS-39 Gripens. In 2009, Danel Aviation collaborated with Arms Corps to sell over 12 SAAF Cheetah C supersonic fighters to the Ecuadorian Air Force. The fighters were modernized with the latest upgrades and avionics from Israel's KFIR CE fighter aircraft. The contract, valued at over $35 million, was signed in December 2010, after Ecuadorian officials inspected the Cheetah fleet in South Africa. By December 2017, Draken International added a dozen South African Cheetah C and Cheetah D fighter jets to its fleet. South Africa committed to refurbishing these aircraft, stored since 2008, and providing ongoing support to Draken International. Sean Gustafson, Draken's Vice President of Business Development, 
highlighted the cheetah's upgraded capabilities, including supersonic speeds, praising South Africa's transformation of a second-generation aircraft into a fourth-generation one, making them effective adversaries for U.S. fighter pilot training. We hope you like this video. Keep watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel.